Hello, yes. students of the first uh, secondary grade, and welcome to a new episode of our program, Bank of Knowledge. On this episode, we're going to study Unit uh, 3, uh, the interaction of uh, genes, uh, and uh, actually, we're going to study uh, Chapter 2, Lack of Dominance. Uh, we talked uh, on the previous episode uh, about uh, Mendelian characters, and today we're going to talk about uh, non-Mendelian characters with our uh, teacher, uh, Ms. Uh, Violette Khairi, uh, Senior Teacher of Biology. Hello, Ms. Violette, and Hello. welcome to the program. Hello. We have a Hello, my dear students. Uh, we start with a revision with uh, what we have studied last time uh, about Mendelian characters, um, which are the principles of uh, genetics. Uh, Remember that uh, Mendel used um, the pea plan to carry out his studies, and we got from Mendel these points. Each character is controlled by one pair of genes. Remember that the plant has seven allelomorphic characters. We chose one of them uh, to study um, the color of the flower, and the color of the flower uh, was uh, controlled by one pair of genes. One of these genes is dominant and the other one is recessive. And by crossing the two different pure individuals, we start with pure individuals, pure dominant and pure recessive. And we got uh, in the first generation, all the individuals uh, have the dominant character. Uh, and in the second generation, the dominant and recessive characters appeared in the ratio three to one. And this is called a uh, genetic, um, genetic pattern is called the complete dominance. Mm -hmm. Complete dominance because one gene dominates over the other one. Okay, so today we are going to uh, study the non-Mendelian characters uh, which do not follow the Mendelian laws. And these uh, and, uh, of course, we have to uh, think about what are the Mendelian characters applied for, uh, of course, the pea plant. And in human, we can find the brown eyes dominates over the blue eyes. The ear lobule, which is free, dominates over the attached ear lobule. So, this, these are some of the characters that can be studied on Mendelian uh, cases. But non-Mendelian cases, we are going to study lack of dominance, multiple alleles, complementary genes, and lethal genes. Let's start with one of them, the lack of dominance. The lack of dominance means the character is represented by one pair or controlled by one pair of genes no one of them dominates over the other one. So it is lack of dominance. Well, the enterhenum flower, like as you see here in the picture, the color of the flower could be red or white or pink. Let's study this in details. If we cross the homozygous or pure red flower, flower plant with another one having uh, white flowers, we will get the first generation, all of them will be pink, as you see in this picture. And if we let the first generation having self-pollination and, self, of course, self-fertilization, the second generation will be red, pink, and white. So how many uh, phenotypes here, as you see? How, how many phenotypes for one character, for the same character? Of course, as you see here, the red, white, and pink, three phenotypes, unlike Mendelian cases. When we studied Mendel, Mendel uh, the pea plant, the first uh, uh, example of Mendelian cases, we found that the color is controlled by one pair of genes, 
but one dominates over the other one, as we said, and the phenotypes were two, either pink or white. Let us uh, study this case in details. As we used to do, the parents are red flowered and white flowered. And we got in the first generation the pink colored flower. So what do you think? How can we represent these characters with uh, letters? In this case, the pink flowers have the gene of red and the gene of white color. But it is not, the first, in the first generation, uh, the individuals are not either red or white. So we have to resemble each one with letters. Which letter should we use? In the first generation, the pink color gathered the both genes. So each gene has its influence to produce the character. This is why no one dominates over the other. So we use the letter of each one. And since each character is represented by two pair, uh, one pair of genes or two genes, so we have to put two letters. Or capital R capital and capital Y W capital W. What about the gametes? Remember, the gametes are the cells containing half the number of chromosomes. And we study one pair of chromosomes here, so we have to get one of them, one R. So remember, each chromosome carries a gene. And in the other individual, one pair of chromosomes, we get one. Remember, the individual produces the gametes during meiosis. And in meiosis, the number of chromosomes is reduced to the half. So the new individual will get the R capital and W capital. So the RW is the gene type of the new individuals and no one dominates over the other. This is why the first generation carries the, an intermediate character between the characters of the two parents. Okay, so what will be the second generation? If we have two individuals carrying the same genotype, RW, R, W. So this is pink and this is pink. What will be the gamete? Again, the gamete is a cell, a reproductive cell, contains half the number of chromosomes. So we get in each gamete one half. Which one of them? Of course, each one, each chromosome will be in a separate gamete. And the other individual will be the same. Okay, so what will be the second generation? We assume that this individual is male individual and this one is female. So these are pollen grains and these are the ova. So we choose one pollen grain with one ova. And we follow the law of probability. So we put R with R. So this pollen green with this ovum. Or it could be this pollen green with another ovum. Or this pollen green with this ovum. And the other one with each other. Like this. So we have the individuals of the second generation. What is the color of this one? Yes, it's red. And what about this? Okay, pink. And what about the other one? White. 
Yes, so we have one red, two pink, and one white. And this is the case of lack of dominance. Again, lack of dominance is different from complete dominance because in complete dominance, the two genes, one of them dominates over the other. It hides the effect of the other one. But in the lack of dominance, the, the individual which has the two genes, each one of them participates in the production of the same character. So the, product, the produced character will be an intermediate one, like the, as we studied now. So the lack of dominance, the genetic analysis illustrates that this character is controlled by a pair of genes. No one of them dominates over the other, as we said, and this happens due to the gene interaction. So these genes interact with each, other, with each other to produce the character, where each one of these genes has an effect in the appearance of the new character. Notice that in case of lack of dominance, the phenotype indicates the genotype. What does it mean? It means that when we say the red flowered plant, so the red color should be RR and the white color should be WW and it cannot be any, anything else. So when we say the individual has the red flower, it should be pure red or RR and it's the same uh, in the white colored uh, flower. And if we say the, the flower is pink, it must be RW, gathering the two genes together. So each phenotype indicates the genotype. Let's have an exercise. In this exercise, we, uh, we can examine our understanding by carrying out the crossing between two individuals, white flowered plant with pink flowered plant. So white with pink. Huh, remember, What's the genotype of white flowered plant? The white color should be, yes, that's right, W, W. It cannot be anything else. What about the pink? That's right, the gene R with the gene W. So how can we get the gametes? The gamete, it could be one of these genes. And since these genes are similar, so we get one of them. It's not the number of the gametes, but what about this one? Yes, gamete with R and another gamete with W. So we have two types of gametes here. What about the first generation? Okay, so we cross this gamete with this one, W, R, and this gamete with this one, we follow the law of, yes, probability. So, what is the color of W, R? The color here is pink. What about this one? Of course, white. So the ratio here is 1 to 1. As you notice, the ratio is, uh, here is different from what we started with because we don't start with two extremes. We don't start with the pure characters. Uh, as we started in, uh, in, the, in our explanation, we started with red, R capital, R capital, uh, and white, uh, W capital, W capital. But here, we don't start with the pure characters. One is pure and the other one is hybrid, like this. So we get another or different ratio. 
So my dear students, uh, this is what we call the uh, lack of dominance. In this, in this part, we need to differentiate between the Mendelian characters and non-Mendelian characters. The Mendelian characters um, called complete dominance and non-Mendelian characters, as we tell it today, is lack of dominance. So how, uh, how can we compare between them? First, we start with the genes of the character the genes of the character in case of complete dominance one dominates over the other one but what about lack of dominance no one dominates over the other as we said okay the second point the individuals in the first generation what are the individuals in the first gen generation in the in the in case of complete dominance all individuals carry the dominant character and the ratio is 100%. In case of lack of dominance, as we, we studied in Enterhenum plant, a new character appears and all individuals carry this character. We call it intermediate character between the characters of the parents. This is a new one and all individuals have uh, carry the same uh, character, which is 100%. The individuals in the second generation, in case of complete dominance, some dominates and some dominant and others recessive. In the ratio three to one, three dominant to one recessive. But in case of lack of dominance, some have one of the two parents the, the uh, two parents' characters, and the others have the new character in the ratio uh, one to two to one. One for each parent, one for red, two for pink, one for white, so one for each parent, and the two for the intermediate character or the new character. Another point of comparison, phenotypes. How many phenotypes do we have in case of uh, complete dominance? Of course, two. Remember, the P flowers um, have pink or white colors. But in case of lack of dominance, as we said uh, in Anterhenum plant, the, colors, the color of the flower could be red, pink, or white. So the phenotypes here uh, in complete dominance are two and the phenotypes in lack of dominance are three. What about the genotypes? In complete dominance, the genotype does not indicate the, geno the, the phenotype does not indicate the genotype of the dominant character. Uh, and um, we can remember that when we say in pea plant, when we say the flower is pink and this pink color, color could be capital P capital P or capital P small p both are pink so when we say pink flowered plant we cannot indicate the genotype we cannot know whether it is pure or hybrid this is why we cannot you depend on the phenotype to indicate the genotype. But what about the lack of dominance in case of enterhenum plant? The phenotype indicates the genotype. This means that when we say the flower is red, it must be R R. When we say the flower is white, when we see the flower and we find it white, it must be the genotype WW. When we see the flower is pink, we cannot say it, it, uh, it is another thing than RW. So the red must be RR, the white must be WW, and the pink must be RW. 
So each phenotype of these can indicate the genotype of them, okay? My dear students, uh, of course, you, you know that the knowledge bank uh, that is provided by the um, Ministry of Education uh, include many things for you. And of course, you now you got a tablet and you could launch the uh, site of the um, knowledge bank and uh, navigate the uh, items that is provided for you items that are provided for you so you can find lots of materials that help you in studying your uh, lessons. Uh, when you uh, uh, launch the uh, site of the uh, knowledge bank you can find uh, videos, you can find texts, you can find exercises and you can check your uh, understanding with them and of course, uh, how, can you, uh, how can somebody get to it? Nowadays? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, do, you, do, you, do you just write Bank of Knowledge or Bank of Marifa to, re to get it? No, of course, each individual has its uh, password and username. Yeah. So uh, after getting this password, so they must username, uh, have an account first. Of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and enter the, the educational uh, knowledge bank, uh, you, can, you can find um, many items. Uh -huh. uh, for first, uh, do, you, do you add something to this uh, uh, site? Do you add something to it? Do you add questions? Do you, do you write yourself something on it? Uh, here, you mm -hmm. have a, another uh, question or uh, the, like a homework for the students. Yeah. They could answer it after watching the videos uh, in the knowledge bank. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the knowledge bank, uh, the students could find many materials for uh, to help them to study and uh, to widen their scope of uh, about the, the the lesson and deepen their understanding. Uh, and of course, um, we uh, if you look at this question, watch the video about the sickle cell anemia. Actually, sickle cell anemia is a case that is applying, applied uh, on the lesson that we have studied today, mm -hmm. so on lack of dominance. So, so they can find this question uh, on the, the website? Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. And they can answer it? They can answer uh, it. Will you check the answer? Next time, inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> Inshallah, when we come next time, we yeah. can answer this question uh, altogether. And if this website, like, uh, um, I don't know, uh, periodically updated, is it I updated? Think so. mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, the Ministry of Education put all materials that the student needs mm -hmm. uh, to study certain topic. Mm -hmm. So many videos, um, uh, texts, uh, as you said, um, questions, mm -hmm. uh, all that he needs. And of course, uh, for the teacher, of course, uh, there is something uh, special. Uh, so let me uh, read this question and uh, explain it. Very quickly, please. Uh, sickle cell anemia is one disease that a human being suffers from. Uh, and after watching the video, you can find the answer of this question. Is sickle cell anemia in human uh, is recessive or dominant? The second question, use a Punnett square uh, to determine the probability of having a baby with sickle cell anemia um, if one parent has a normal genotype and uh, the other parent uh, carries the sickle cell trait. So let me just... Uh, uh, we don't <laughs> have much time, all right? We can, uh, the they can square. check uh, the website, okay. uh, all right? And they can get it. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Ms. Violette Khairi, sen Senior Teacher of Biology. Thank, thank you. you for being with us on this episode. We've been with you on air, uh, dear students of the first secondary grade, and we've had uh, the second chapter of Unit 3, Lack of Dominance. We've talked about uh, non-Mendelian uh, characters, and we'll be with you always on this program so do follow us and until we meet you again wish you all the best goodbye goodbye